Hey, how's it going? It's Mega Reach here. So today we're going to be breaking down my new single, Fresh Eyes, which is coming out in a few weeks. And I'll be breaking down how I made each part of the song and also how I made my voice sound good on the track, even though I can't sing. Fresh eyes. Okay, so that track you just heard is Fresh Eyes. That's the track we're going to be breaking it, breaking down today. So my aim with this track was to make something slightly dark, slightly moody, and of a lower tempo, because most of my tracks are housey, dance music type thing. So let's break down all the different parts. So starting with the kick drum. Right? So the kick I used for Fresh Eyes is almost like a rock kick or maybe like a quite a hard hitting EDM kick. And what I did is I rolled off the top, the top end of the kick. So I put a low pass filter on it. And that's why it sounds more like a thud, like a low boomy thud rather than you know a big heavy uh, rock kick with a lot of top end. I felt like when it had too much top end, it was cutting through the mix a bit too much and it kind of stood out. So I just rolled it off just using the filter in Ultra Beat. So let me play you the, um, the kick part so you can see really just how simple it is. So the snare I used was a kind of trap sounding snare. I guess that's the, the best way to describe it. It's very, uh, it's very punchy and I thought it cut through really well. So what it is, I layered this with a really quite a piercing clap and I put them on top of each other and then I laid down the um, snare parts. Now for the hi-hats, I took four of the same hi-hat sound, right? And I panned them to different places in the stereo field. And then I used those sounds to make the hi-hat pattern. And then after I'd recorded it, um, I put a pitch shifter on the track and then gradually lowered the pitch at the end of every four bars. So it gives quite a cool effect to the hi-hat sound. So I'll show you what the uh, pattern sounds like now. So the bass sound is, is actually quite simple. It's just a top bass, which is like a growly uh, bass, and then a sub layered underneath. Then to make it a bit fatter, I layered the sub bass sound underneath it. So I wanted guitar parts on this track. So I actually put it in the verse. Very simple power chords, right? We just followed the, uh, the bass line uh, and sounded a bit like this. So after laying down these tracks, um, first thing I realized is that my guitar playing, while it is functional, it's not exactly the tightest. All right, so I used a little bit of audio quantize to uh, just get it sounding a little bit more in time with the rest of the track. So I used the flex editor inside Logic, uh, quantized the power chords strumming to an eighth note within the project and all of a sudden it sounded like I've got a extremely good uh, session guitarist to do these parts. So I added a bit of compression just to make it sound a little bit more consistent, a little bit more beefy, pumpy, whatever you want to call it. And then I layered it with a second guitar track, panned one hard left and one hard right. And then on top of that, I actually layered um, 
the same notes as the chords, but an octave up. Um, or maybe it was a fifth up, actually. Uh, and then played that on top of the power chords. Now another big element of the track and the verses is this orchestral hit sound, which ties together all the parts uh, in the verse and just gives it a kind of a bigger, more epic feeling. Then to add some extra dynamics, I actually bounced down this orchestral hit part and I reversed each one of the chords. Because I tried to find a way to record the vocals um, and make it sound professionally recorded. Now my first instinct was to try and set up some kind of homemade vocal booth, but I didn't have any uh, acoustic fabric or padding. I didn't have any mattresses. So my initial idea was to use like a, a laundry rack, put a duvet over it and a towel and kind of sit underneath it. And I had my laptop on top of a luggage bag, right? And then I put the mic on top of the luggage bag as well and sat in this sort of den that I made and tried to um, sing in there. Now look, it did deaden the sound, right? This kind of ghetto uh, vocal booth. It, it deadened the sound, but it also sounded really boxy. Like you could hear the sound of the room. Uh, inside, you could hear the sound of the den, actually. And it just, it didn't sound that great. Uh, so then I tried singing outside of this den and it just sounded a bit better. So I ended up using that. Uh, take instead. So here's how the vocals sounded raw. Out of focus, I can't see. Nothing's fucking clear to me. Every minute passes in slow mo. I can hear you knocking at the window. So, as you can see, not exactly uh, a trained singer. So, what I did next, I did a bit of um, uh, sibilance, right? Removed the S sounds using a Waves plugin, um, de-essing, right? Then a bit of compression, just to make it sound a bit more fat, a bit more even. Um, then I put it through an auto-tune plugin. So I set the settings pretty harsh to make it sound a little bit more of that classic auto-tune sound. So a bit almost like a synthesizer crossed with a, a vocal, right? And one thing I did is I added a formant um, to the voice. So what this does is this makes your voice sound a little bit deeper without changing the pitch, right? It makes it sound a bit more like you're using like this part of your voice, right? So it's a bit deeper, but it's the same, the same pitch. In addition to this, I added a, a high layer. So exactly the same vocal again, but I pitched it an octave up using the auto-tune uh, and layered that on top of the vocals. And that just made it sound again, just a little bit more artificial and a little bit more interesting so it fit within the track uh, a bit better. Out of focus I can't see Nothing's fucking clear to me Every minute passes in slow-mo I can hear you knocking at the window So, put all the pieces together and this is how the verse sounds. Out of focus I can't see Fucking clear to me. Every minute passes in slow mo. I can hear you knocking out the window. So, actually, my favorite part of this song is the chorus. Um, I really like the synth sound, I like the melodies, and I did something special. I actually put harmonies, vocal harmonies, into the chorus. Now, because I'm not a trained singer, I find singing harmonies on top of 
you know, a main vocal quite challenging. And I didn't want to have to spend hours and hours and hours uh, learning how to how to do that and work out all the harmony and then learn how to sing it. So I just used auto-tune for all of the harmonies, right? So there's uh, two layers of harmonies on top of the main vocal in the chorus. With fresh eyes, I see. With fresh eyes, I see. With fresh eyes, I see. So the synth in the chorus is probably one of my favorite parts of the track and the, I like the synth. It's just, an, again, another alchemy patch, which I've edited a little bit. And it just sounded like something you'd hear in maybe an 80s pop song, almost like a fake uh, voice sound. Um, I guess that's the best way to describe it. But I don't know, I just really like that kind of nostalgic uh, 80s kind of neon sound. And so I had two parts to it. I had almost like a bass part, uh, and it was also a higher melody part. So this is how the bass part went. And then this is how the melody went on the same synth. Now this track's gonna come out uh, probably in a few weeks. It's gonna be released. I'm gonna try and do a slightly longer uh, build up to this release as almost like a marketing experiment. I've been doing a release every two weeks up to now. And um, yeah, I mean, it's been going well. We've certainly certainly got a lot of streams on Spotify now. I think I'm up to about 20,000 or something, which is just amazing. Um, so I wanna see what it's like. If I leave a bit of a bigger gap in between releases, it gives me more time to promote uh, more time to build up a little bit of, uh, you know, hype about about each release. And also it gives me more time to really perfect each track and make it even better quality. So I'll keep you updated with uh, the progress with that. Um, so, hope you like this video. Leave a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next Thursday for the next Mega Reach vlog.